This is a discussion. What's the future of the adverse drainage diseases in the glaucoma management? So, in the very first slide, I have spoken what's the desired outcome every glaucoma surgeon wants. It's the effective control of the intraocular pressure with a minimum post-operative complications. What is the most promising newer surgical techniques we presently have? The current most popular surgical options is the trabeculectomy with mito or without mitomycin C, ologens, and the aqueous drainage devices. Now, the trabeculectomy is the only one hope which most of the surgeons consider. What is the surgical outcome of a glaucoma surgery? Either it effectively controls the intraocular pressure or there is a certain complications like hypertomy that can lead to deep anterior chamber or associated with a shallow anterior chamber, blab leakage, over filtering blabs, choroidal effusions, process with over filtering blabs. What are the pros and cons of the aqueous drainage devices? They are a very standard procedure. Post operative care is uh, relatively easier. There is a learning curve, but definitely it's shorter than the trap. If trap fail, what next? There are certain concerns the patient have if we talk about the tubes. And the long term results of the aqueous drainage devices are still awaited. Why? The tubes or the aqueous drainage devices are a standard procedure because almost same surgical technique is applied in every patient. In contrast to the trabeculectomy, which requires more fine work, more fineness, and also the doses of the antifibrotic agent, number of the sutures, the flap creations, use of the variable sutures is all surgeon dependent. Some surgeons prefer to use a quadrangle flap, scleral flap, some use a triangular flap. The ostium formation is also very variable. Some use the punch, some use the normal uh, blades or the scissors. So what the TVT studies says after five years, this is the result of the uh, Kalpenmayer plot which shows that the failure in the trap and the tube group and after comparing these two groups, they said that the probability of the failure was 29.8% in tube, which is significantly lower than the trap group. Now, the tubes or the aqueous drainage devices becoming the primary treatment of choice in many of the refractive glaucoma such as neovascular glaucoma, eye syndrome, uveitic glaucoma, glaucoma occurring after PK. Once I undergone the literature review, I found that the barbell balls are effective in using, uh, <coughs> in controlling the neovascular glaucoma. Maltino can also be used and they are adequate in controlling the neovascular glaucoma. Both AGV and the barbell valve are effective in controlling the uveitic glaucoma. AGV can be uh, useful in controlling the pressure after vitrectomy and the silicone oil use after retinal detachment. AGV can also be effective in controlling the pressure rise after PK. Very interesting fact I came across that the Medicare of the US has shown that the Medicare beneficiaries between the 1995 to 2004, there is a steady decline in the trabeculectomy and there is a significant rise in the tubes. Survey of the American General Society shows that the members are more enthusiastic in using the tubes rather than the trap. So in conclusion, modern aqueous drainage devices can effectively control the intraocular pressure with a minimum post-operative complications. So there is a converting glaucoma practice from the tube, which only one light we have in our hands. 
to the light of hope that is the aqueous drainage devices and the future is to develop a device which have a minimum complication and can be used as a primary procedure in all of our glaucoma cases thank you and this is our team